Hey, Corey, can you hear me? Hey. <coughs> okay, I was muted again. Okay, so when so you usually do the intro and then you mute yourself, right? For the rest of the time? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. Sweet. Um uh, yeah, I think yeah, I think feel free to feel free to kind of start the start the PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Um, and then like that can be the background for when people join. But great job getting it up and running. It's your first webinar. First webinar. Thank you. I was like, I have to start early because I don't want to mess something up. Yeah, no, it's also like yeah. nicer starting early because there's like less pressure. There's like less people on um, the inherent nature of a webinar like having people watch it makes it like somewhat stressful and like honestly go to webinar isn't the easiest platform to navigate yeah all right i think i'm got it set looks good so then when I have this control panel popped up, can you see it? No, can't see the control panel. Okay. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I think, like, for me and Leslie, you can unmute um, us to ask questions, but I think for the rest of the people, um, we'll just um, have them type in questions and then you can read them. Okay, sounds good. Oh, and, and then, then do you have like a, sorry, what? Do you have Teams on your phone? Yeah. Okay, maybe I'll message you there then. And then hopefully it won't come up on the webinar screen. Okay, well, maybe exit out of um, Teams and Outlook just because, yeah, that'll pop up for everyone. Hello. This is Christmas Recky. Can you hear me? This is Patrick. Hi. 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 Yep. Yeah. Um, you have 
Corey Grimbeld from SEC here, as well as Gabriella Scarpa. And yeah, we can hear you both perfectly. I think we'll wait a few minutes for other MassEC folks to join, as well as um, those who signed up from the public. Um, and then we'll have Gabby give a brief intro to um, this presentation series and um, some like logistics for the presentation for the attendees, and then we can get started. Um, so do you have the presentation slides already loaded? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I have them here. Um, we just have a few intro slides and then it's the presentation that you sent us. Okay. So then, yeah, just so then, yeah. Gabby will follow along, but just let her know when to change slides. Okay. So how many people are you expecting on the presentation? Um, about 12 people registered. So, and I think, yeah, that's a mix of Mass EC people as well as um, people from the public that I think are interested in offshore wind. Okay. All right, Gabby, would you like to kick us off? Yeah, sounds good. So hi, all. Thank you for joining us virtually today for a Mass CC Clean Tech Spotlight webinar series presentation. Um, just to briefly cover some housekeeping items, all attendees are cur currently in listen only mode. We'll start by quickly introducing the webinar series. Then we'll introduce the guest speaker for today's webinar and let them present on their company and technology. 
Following their presentation, there will be roughly 15 minutes reserved for questions from the audience. If you have a question, please feel free to just use the question submission feature and type it in as the presentation is happening and I can ask them on your behalf during the question period. Now just to give a short introduction to MassCC's work, MassCC's TechDev program suite consists of three different grant programs, Catalyst, Amplify, and Innovate. Each of these programs target providing support to clean tech startups and researchers at different points in their technical and commercial development, from prototyping to demonstrate with an industrial partners. Today's presentation is from an Amplify Mass grantee. Christopher Nezrecki and Patrick Dane will present on Windstar, an offshore wind-focused research collaborative house at UMass Lowell. They have created a network for public agencies and companies to cost-effectively collaborate on shared pre-competitive research topics by leveraging R&D investment to access world-class facilities, faculty, and graduate students. They created this with the goal of decreasing cost and increasing reliability at all stages of the wind power plant development, component fabrication, array design, operations, and maintenance. Thank you again for joining us and please enjoy the presentation. Well, thank you very much uh, for the uh, introduction. Um, so I, I'm Patrick Drain, uh, and uh, Chris Mizrecki is also um, on the on the line to uh, uh, to help with this presentation. Um, we're presenting on Windstar, which is the Wind Energy Science, Technology, and Research Industry University Cooperative Research Center. Um, it's part of uh, the National Science Foundation IUCRC program, uh, and the Mass CEC is a member of that uh, consortium through the Amplify Mass uh, program uh, and we thank the Mass CEC greatly for uh, for um, contributing to the center um, through its involvement. Next slide. Uh, so WinStar conducts research that benefits our industry members. Um, it brings together university and industry researchers, um, the, the two universities being the University of Massachusetts Lowell, up in Lowell, Massachusetts, uh, and our partner site is uh, the University of Texas at Dallas. Um, and uh, together we, we work with all of our industry partners to conduct basic and applied research on wind energy. Uh, we combine the state-of-the-art capabilities and knowledge at these uh, universities as well as with our industry partners uh, to work on projects that are relevant to the industry partners. Uh, we also train students. It's a big part of the universities. Um, and uh, we train those students in these advanced technologies that are important to the industry partners. Um, and it creates a pipeline for the state-of-the-art talent uh, which flows from the universities to industry. We also um, are, because we include the entire wind energy supply chain, uh, we foster a community of networking interactions and collaborations among those different stakeholders. Um, and uh, our primary goal uh, as, a, as a center and a, as a research portfolio is to lower the cost of uh, the levelized cost of energy uh, through increased performance, improved reliability, uh, uh, improving material components, uh, a lot of modeling, as well as reducing uh, capital and operating expenditures for the wind uh, turbine and wind farm systems. Next slide. So a little bit of background. Uh, the center was established in 2014. We've completed uh, our phase one, uh, which is in a no cost extension through 2021. Um, our, we were just uh, uh, a few months ago uh, awarded our phase two, which is a five year uh, phase two from the National Science Foundation, which will uh, extend the center 
through uh, at least 2024. Um, and, uh, and then these centers typically uh, extend for a phase three uh, and, and continue on uh, to, to continue supporting uh, the industry. Uh, we have major annual meetings and events, uh, which include our industrial advisory board meetings, which uh, are held both in, in June, uh, typically up in Lowell, and January at, in, uh, at our partner site in Texas. Uh, and then we present our, our final presentations uh, through uh, our September WinStar webinar days. Uh, and then the research projects that, that are funded in the center are typically one-year projects uh, which start in September and, and run through August. Uh, and to date, the center has completed 34 research projects um, and uh, the center has 10 uh, projects currently underway. Next slide. Um, so, this slide here shows the different members that are part of the center. Uh, so we have uh, uh, blade, uh, turbine blade and tower manufacturers. We have material suppliers. We have condition monitoring and control electronics manufacturers, uh, actuator technology development uh, developers, advocacy organizations like the Mass Clean Energy Center, uh, and then a number of wind farm owners and operators. Uh, in the last year, we've added uh, Shell uh, and LM Wind Power uh, to, to the center. Um, and Shell, um, uh, a big part of their joining is because of their, uh, their partnership in Mayflower Wind, uh, which is one of the, the uh, uh, developers uh, for, for the offshore um, in partnership with EDP, Renewables, uh, which uh, has been a, a founding member uh, since 2014. Next slide. Uh, so the center leadership, uh, Chris Mizrecki, who's on the call, is is uh, uh, is the center director, um, and Mario Ritea out of University of Texas at Dallas is is the site director there. Uh, I support the center as as an assistant director. Uh, and then we have an IAB chair and a vice chair uh, that rotate uh, through different different members um, through the IAB, uh, uh, basically with one-year terms. Our current IAB chair is is uh, Neil Fine out of Aquinas, uh, which is a small business in uh, uh, in in New England. Uh, and then um, Nathan Bruno is our vice chair. Uh, from Hexion, which is which is a, a very large material supplier to the wind industry. Uh, and then we've had past chairs from TPI Composites, EDP, GE, and, and Pattern. Uh, so they, they really represent uh, across the, the supply chain. Next slide. Um, so our resources um, really leverage the uh, two uh, large public research universities being UMass Lowell uh, and UT Dallas. Um, the focus on UMass Lowell focuses on projects uh, really in the area of materials manufacturing, reliability testing, modeling, monitoring, uh, energy storage, and transmission. Um, so two of the the research labs uh, at UMass Lowell that are that are uh, really core to this center are the Advanced Composite Material and Textile Research Laboratory, which does a lot of different material uh, material uh, uh, research, uh, and our uh, Structural Dynamics and Acoustic Systems Lab, which uh, deals with a lot of the, the reliability uh, research and uh, monitoring uh, type projects. Uh, and then we have uh, uh, significant uh, clean energy uh, research going on that that's really growing in the areas of, of energy storage um, and, uh, uh, and and other areas in in renewables uh, so that all gets brought together um, all of those efforts get brought together within within the center uh, UT Dallas uh, focuses on uh, high fidelity simulations lidar measurements um, they have a, 
uh, a large wind tunnel there that, that we're beginning to, uh, to use in projects uh, and, uh, and, and controls uh, is another big area there. Uh, next slide. Sorry, the PowerPoint broke. Okay. Um, while we're while we're waiting for that to come up, uh, I will uh, I'll, I'll continue on a little bit here. So um, we have significant facilities. Um, I, I mentioned the Structural Dynamics and Acoustic Systems Lab and the Advanced Composite Material and Textile Research Laboratory. Um, a lot of the research also leverages. Um, uh, testing that we've done in collaboration with the Wind Technology Testing Center uh, uh, that's operated by the Mass CEC in Charlestown, Mass, uh, and, um, and, and a lot of computational resources and, and plastics engineering and, and uh, a number of our uh, electrical engineering uh, resources. Um, additionally, uh, out, of, out of UT Dallas, uh, the, the uh, um, LIDAR, uh, the capabilities that they have of, of bringing LIDAR out to uh, different, uh, different wind farms, uh, those being off, uh, onshore um, uh, programs, uh, and their, their large um, wind tunnel uh, as well. I'm not sure if the presentation is going to Yeah, sorry, I'm still working. No problem. Would you prefer if I pause or would you prefer me to continue? Um, feel free to continue. I'm going to work on pulling this up on my computer. It'll just take a few minutes. Okay. Um, so um, so our, our big research areas um, uh, are, um, are, are typically um, settled into composites and blade manufacturing, uh, structural health monitoring and non-destructive inspection, uh, wind plant modeling and measurements, control systems, wind turbines and, and wind plants, energy storage and grid integration, uh, and foundations and towers. Um, in, in 2019, in the last year, we completed seven projects uh, with the expertise of 11 faculty and 17 students in the areas of composites and blade manufacturing and structural health monitoring and non-destructive inspection. Uh, much of that work uh, is being done at UMass Lowell. Uh, the, in the areas of wind plant modeling and measurement and control systems and wind turbines and, and wind plants, we had four projects uh, which were supported by five faculty and five students, uh, much of that being done at, uh, at UT Dallas. Um, and additionally, there was a, uh, a project that was done in Foundations and Towers, which was an additional project, um, and uh, two faculty and two students uh, working on that project. So the major program outcomes for the last uh, for the last year um, have been uh, uh, that we've we've now completed 34 uh, uh, project reports and presentations for our members. Uh, the center has developed five software, uh, filed one patent, uh, developed three hardware. Uh, published 11 journal publications. Uh, two students have completed their, their master's theses, uh, three doctoral dissertations, um, 24 conference publications, uh, and we've been able to bring in uh, different uh, funding. You can go ahead a couple slides. Uh, go ahead another slide and one more. Um, We've, uh, as a center, we've also uh, received significant uh, additional funding in uh, 
to, to continue some of these project efforts. Uh, one award was uh, $1.4 million from the DOE uh, to UMass Lowell uh, and UT Dallas is, is uh, collaborating on a, on a $3.5 million ARPA-E uh, project. Next slide. Uh, so the, the next few slides detail uh, some of the, the projects uh, which have been completed in the last year, um, and we'll go through those, project, uh, those, those projects with a, a slide highlight. So next slide. So um, uh, several of the projects have, have focused on materials. Uh, this project, Mechanical Property Enhancement Prediction for Matrix Materials, uh, was led out of UMass Lowell. Uh, you can see the, the developments here uh, where it's looking at, um, at the, the resin and the fiber orientation. So fibers uh, within composites are, um, are often thought to be uh, very um, sort of very organized with, with fibers, but the fiber orientation is actually quite random and, and looking at these uh, representative volume element size uh, within the modeling uh, provides much better uh, transverse uh, properties of these materials and, and allows for the materials to be better modeled, characterized, uh, uh, or characterized and then modeled, um, and then uh, allows for those better transverse properties to, uh, to allow the manufacturers to better understand the materials uh, better optimize uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the composites and the weight uh, reduction. So the major results out of this project enable resin and composite manufacturers to assess uh, resins early in the development phase, uh, utilizing uh, minimal testing, uh, and to provide a better understanding for the most relevant resin, resin thermochemical properties to optimize uh, uh, to achieve enhanced performance across the composite characteristic length scales um, up to the up to the blade level. Uh, so this this project really helps the the um, material suppliers and the blade manufacturers uh, produce and optimize better blades, which allow for uh, larger blades. Um, Lower weight, um, in, in improved uh, improved performance of the of the turbines, uh, and and blades getting bigger and bigger, especially in the offshore uh, area, is is critically important to to understand those materials um, in order to be able to achieve those those blades without uh, without them being um, uh, too heavy. Next slide. Uh, so the, the next project uh, is Engineered Sandwich Core Construction Experiment and Evaluation. This project was out of, uh, led out of UT Dallas. Uh, it was looking at the, the, the core uh, of the, um, the, the core materials, basically uh, uh, balsa core or foam cores that are used within the blades in order to uh, create thick enough walls, uh, but keep the weight down. Uh, and the major results of this project were uh, qualitative understanding of how the material properties of sandwich cores are affected by resin uptake uh, in the resin transfer molding process and how the core composite uh, co core sandwich composite fails under under loads and this uh, guide uh, for the development uh, for the design and optimization of manufacturing uh, sandwich cores for turbine blades uh, to lower levelized cost of energy. So uh, again, this is about uh, better understanding uh, the, the manufacturing process for the blades uh, in order to make blades uh, longer um, and, uh, um, and, and keep their weights, their weights down. Next slide. Uh, so an, another um, uh, material property is structural wind blade repair optimization. So uh, a lot of our owner operator uh, members within the supply chain are, are interested in how to deal with repair and how to deal with that uh, when you're on the blades 
um, and, and, you're, and you're trying to deal with a repair uh, to, to extend the life of, of the blades. So um, here you have to, uh, it, it's maybe been eroded away, uh, whether that's um, uh, through, through uh, water or through, or, or through um, sand or, or anything like that, that, that wears, wears these, uh, the, the composite away in the blade. Uh, and how to patch it um, and, and still maintain the, the, the strength and, and also um, avoid things like water uptake into the blades uh, as, it, um, as the coatings erode away. So this high fidelity uh, finite element modeling uh, will provide guide, uh, guidelines for, uh, to define optimized repair processes under various environmental conditions. Uh, establish better practices for specific kinds of repairs, uh, setting and setting the basis for onsite for an onsite tool um, that can be used to provide the shortest cure cycle uh, to evenly cure laminates for specific repair configurations. Uh, so again, this this helps uh, shorten the amount of time that that um, uh, repair personnel may be um, on a blade. Uh, the amount of time uh, that, that blades are down and, and improving the overall quality uh, of those repairs. Next slide. Uh, this project uh, is, uh, is about uh, the thick paste adhesive bond lines and, and uh, understanding the residual stresses. So uh, blades are are typically made as a as a clamshell, and and you uh, and the, the two halves of the blades have to come together uh, and be bonded together. Uh, this project uh, addresses all of those uh, adhesives that that hold the the blade together in the manufacturing process. Uh, and the major results out of this was a finite element model uh, capable of tracing the thermal uh, conversion and residual stress histories in thick adhesive bond lines. Uh, and the cure kinetics of the bonding paste has been successfully characterized using non-isothermal uh, differential scanning calorimeter analysis and validated with temperature readings from the curing process of, adhesive, uh, of an adhesive bead of variable thickness from five millimeters up to 30 millimeters thick. Next slide. Um, so now we're into some projects that are more about monitoring of the blades. Uh, this is monitoring of wind turbine foundation and technology. Uh, this project was was really about um, running running uh, testing to to evaluate a device which was which was patented by the the center. Uh, this work was, uh, a lot of this work was actually done by Kristen Mizrecki. And the major result of this project uh, were the displacement uh, monitoring indicator uh, that's shown in the photo here uh, can be re replaced as an effective tool for structural health monitoring of the wind turbine foundations by sig significantly reducing the inspection cost per, per turbine. So this device um, is able to uh, judge whether there's any movement at the base between the tower and the foundation uh, and to really monitor that on a on a on a very low cost basis that can be uh, implemented uh, across uh, the the wind turbine fleets. Uh, these sensors may now be deployed at large scale uh, to secure our energy infrastructure without compromising the the lifetime of the assets. Next slide. So another uh, wind uh, uh, monitoring system is the system integration of a wind turbine blade acoustic monitoring system. Uh, uh, this um, has actually, a lot of this work has been done in, in collaboration with the Wind Technology Testing Center. Um, and uh, the, the project has developed two acoustic sensing nodes, one passive uh, and one uh, active. Uh, and has successfully shown the feasibility of the acoustic monitoring technology in a laboratory environment as well as uh, in the field. Um, so multiple scales of, of laboratory tests were done uh, in small scale um, in, in our labs and in larger scale at the Wind Technology Testing Center. Uh, 
Um, and this year, the, there's work being done to uh, uh, to deploy this uh, within uh, 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 multiple wind turbines uh, at one of the uh, uh, partner sites. Next slide. Um, so this project is is more in the area of the high fidelity uh, modeling being performed at, at UT Dallas. Uh, the major outcomes here are statistical analysis of three years of SCADA data, uh, allowing to allowed to qu quanti quantify the yearly energy losses due to uh, the kind of phenomenon that uh, amounts to four percent of the turbines uh, installed by uh, the escarpment. Um, the LIDAR capability of resource assessment in complex terrain were explored and reveal uh, an outstanding accuracy and, and 2D RANS model has been adapted for uh, one of the, one of the uh, uh, wind farms. So these are very high fidelity models that allow for uh, understanding of, uh, of the wake interaction um, and help lay out farms uh, better. The, this type of modeling uh, can be very important um, uh, both onshore and offshore in, in terms of how to deal with siting uh, of them and, and how to deal with the spacing uh, of those turbines. Uh, and then once you have the, the, uh, the, the spacing in place, you can do uh, things like wake steering uh, to, to optimize the output of the farm. Next slide. Uh, so uh, this project is around uh, load mitigation technologies. Uh, so these are uh, advanced control systems for uh, evaluating uh, evaluation of on-blade load mitigation uh, technologies. The, the major uh, results of this project, which was out of UT Dallas, uh, the tool allows for control algorithms to command virtual on-blade actuators that modify the local sectional lift and drag coefficients over a, uh, over a partial span of each blade. The controller is universally uh, applicable to any actuator technology used uh, to command uh, changes in sectional lift. Next slide. Um, so this is our, our last project um, uh, of our major projects, mechanical property, microstructure property relationships and manufacturing construction methods for ultra high performance fiber reinforced concrete for wind towers. So this is uh, in our towers uh, thrust area. The, the major results of this project were uh, extensive design analysis employing a commercial finite element code uh, were performed on ultra high uh, uh, ultra high performance com uh, concrete wind towers of three different heights: 100 meters, 150 meters, and 200 meters. Uh, topological optimizations were further performed on uh, the initial designs to reduce material consumption. Levelized cost of uh, energy analysis were carried out. Uh, and compare to cases of all concrete and all steel towers. The comparison demonstrated significant advantage, advantages of this ultra high uh, performance concrete solution for, for tall wind towers. And again, tall wind towers um, are, are critically important as the blades get larger and larger uh, and the, the turbines get larger, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, useful also in, in uh, offshore tower constructions. Next slide. So just to go uh, quickly through a few center processes, next slide. So uh, the, the center operates on, these, uh, on this annual schedule of, of new members uh, joining and topics being developed. Uh, the faculty then uh, propose these projects uh, based on topics uh, suggested by the industrial the industrial advisory board members. Uh, the the uh, projects are proposed and and voted on by the IAB members. They're selected by uh, the IAB, and then they go through the the project. Um, the the, the uh, um, they get worked on by the by the students and and faculty teams over the course of the year. They're evaluated mid 
mid-year at our uh, at our winter IAB meeting, uh, and the and the cycle uh, and the cycle continues. Uh, next slide. Uh, so membership in in uh, the center in in 2019, uh, the the membership uh, for full members was 42,400 per year, um, and we also have small businesses join uh, at a at a reduced rate of 15,900. Uh, these this type of of structure allows for uh, significant return on investment. Uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, members have direct uh, influence on the selection and, and execution of the projects uh, by voting on them and, and mentoring them through the year. Uh, there's a lot of shared risk. Uh, the members get royalty for free licenses to the to the technology and, and access to the uh, all the publications. Um, there's a lot of student engagement and, and a lot of strategic networking among the members. Uh, every three years, our membership uh, fee increases, uh, and and this was one of the transition years in 2020. Uh, our full members are are now paying 42, I'm sorry, 44,944 per year, uh, and and the the rate. Next slide. So our our members have have found tremendous uh, value in in the center. Uh, by uh, uh, invaluable in, in assessing and proposing uh, potential Im improvement initiatives, uh, different benefits uh, of accessing the research and, and benefiting the, the industry, um, creating a highly qualified and motivated uh, students. Uh, the students find these projects uh, very interesting to, to work on, uh, and they're able to get a lot of interaction with with industry and, and our other partners uh, in, in the execution of the projects. These uh, projects uh, uh, have, a, have a tremendous value in, in, uh, in really bringing uh, the, the faculty to understand uh, current industry needs. Uh, and and uh, it also supports uh, the, the students really understanding uh, the, the current industry needs and, and, and they become uh, uh, great employees as they, uh, as they graduate. Uh, and then we've had some members uh, also uh, access uh, significant funding uh, for, for uh, uh, projects that, that come out of these areas uh, and collaborations. Next slide. Um, so we, have, we're, we always have new, uh, new members joining. We're always looking to have uh, new, uh, new members join uh, from, from across the country, but we, we encourage uh, members from uh, from Massachusetts and uh, and and the region to 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 come and contact us uh, about membership. Next slide. Uh, so we generate um, uh, annual reports each year. Um, a lot of the content from this presentation came out of our uh, 2019 annual report. Um, most of our information. Uh, from our center is is available on our on our website, uh, which is www.uml.edu/backslash/winstar, uh, uh, and it's a great resource for for getting all of this information. And next slide. Um, uh, and here's a, a variety of uh, information to uh, to contact us if you have uh, any questions about the center, and we've got. Uh, a number of industry uh, industrial advisory board members that that are always willing to uh, talk to uh, potential companies and, and members who would uh, like to know more and 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 potentially join the center uh, to support future future research projects. And I think that's our our final slide. Uh, at this point, I'd I'd open up uh, I'd hand it back to to the Mass CEC and and open up for any questions that you have for either myself or or the director, Kristen Zarecki. All right, thank you so much. Um, again, just a reminder to the audience to please submit your questions in the question box on your GoToWebinar interface, and I can ask them on your behalf.
So this is Leslie from um, Massey EC. I do have just uh, one question for the Windstar folks. And, um, I apologize for the baby in the background, but <laughs> um, uh, thank you for presenting. And, and Massey EC has been uh, pleased to be part of Windstar for the last uh, on and off several years. And, and it's a great center. Um, we're very supportive of the work you all are completing. So thank you for presenting on that today to a wider audience. Um, I do have a question um, uh, that maybe I was hoping you could explain to everyone else a little bit about what happens after the projects are completed. Like, what does that next stage look like for the research and the industrial partners? Sure. So, uh, our our projects are are typically one year projects. Uh, many of those projects build into multi year efforts that that. Um, that leverage um, the, the prior results of, of a project, uh, example being uh, the, the development of a, of, of a technology at lab scale and then being uh, field tested uh, in, a, in a future year and, and expanded. Um, so many of our projects have, have built into multi-year efforts. Um, uh, many of our, uh, our, of our projects, so that's internal to the center. Um, in terms of the software uh, that have been developed, the, the hardware that have uh, been been developed, our industry partners often uh, utilize those those resources to uh, to further their um, uh, their uh, deployment uh, in, of the of the turbines, the, uh, the 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 repair optimization strategies. Um, become uh, used by the owner operators and, and by uh, the material suppliers to uh, to, to improve those those um, um, sort of operation uh, 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 aspects. Uh, the, uh, the the material developments uh, get used by the blade manufacturers in in uh, cooperation with the the OEMs and and the resin suppliers to uh, to improve the, the manufacturing processes um, through the knowledge that's been gained, through the software uh, that have been developed and, and become uh, accessible to the members. Uh, so um, that's ho hopefully that addresses your, your question. Uh, but there, there's quite a bit that uh, happens within the center as, as well as uh, by the, the industry partners. So uh, this is Chris Nizrecki, I'll chime in a little bit. Um, some of the projects lead to um, uh, reports. Uh, some of them lead to publications and conference papers. Some of the projects go from one year to the next. And they, um, so as Patrick said, they start out with a laboratory experiment and they may go to, um, well, let's say for example, the blade testing, uh, the wind turbine acoustic monitoring sensor that we've been developing. Well, first we had to show that it worked on a small scale, then at a scale, at utility scale at the WTTC, we've, we've um, demonstrated that. And the next step for that would be to field test it. So that's an example of a, um, uh, some electronics and hardware that's currently uh, in the plan to be implemented on a wind turbine in the field. Uh, we have some other devices. So for example, the, the, the foundation sensors, um, Right now, we, we had a beta version that was implemented into a wind farm uh, at one of the sites on five different turbines. Um, and so that was a successful test. It went through the next phase of that, uh, the next projects involved um, uh, making advancements and modifications to the design so that way the device could be um, manufactured for injection molding. And so that was the next phase. And so we've done that. We're, we're waiting for this COVID-19 uh, stuff to settle down so we can do the, the, the last field trial before we say, hey, this is a commercially available part that people can use. So that's an example of some of the projects and how they go. Great, thank you. Um, just to answer a quick logistical question, um, yes, we can distribute copies of the slides, um, please just email amplifymass at massec.com um, and yeah, we can share this public presentation. Um, and then back to the Windstar folks, um, we have a question regarding 
where most of your funding comes from, from membership or sponsorship? So most of our funding, uh, so our funding basically comes from from two primary streams. One is the National Science Foundation, which uh, funds the the operation of the center, uh, and the research projects are funded uh, by the by the members. Uh, um, uh, by the collaborative pool of, of the, the membership fees um, go towards funding uh, the, the research. Uh, and then are in partnership, the, the third element would be in, in partnership, once you have uh, these, these members that have been working together, uh, industry partners and, and university researchers uh, working hand in hand together on these different projects, it has led to uh, to other projects that are then funded by organizations like the Department of Energy uh, and, uh, and and things like that. So um, uh, so there's there's sort of those three funding streams uh, for the center as a whole. So let me, this is Chris. Let me add in a little bit um, just to, just to say that the way the center is organized. For every dollar that comes in, there's about $16 that are coming from somebody else, whether that's either NSF or another company. Um, and so that enables us to, you know, for a fairly small investment for a company, uh, amplify or leverage those funds uh, to do a lot of different things. And so all the companies that are part of the center reap the benefits of it. The other, the other thing is, is that we also get funds, um, you know, because of the networking that goes on, uh, a lot of the companies and the, the, the participants of the center team on different projects. So for example, we've had several um, uh, successful DOE efforts and ARPA-E efforts that have been led to multi-million dollar grants that would not have been possible if we hadn't had the preliminary results uh, through the WinStar Center. So, um, you know, the funds for the membership fees are further amplified in that way. Great, thank you. Um, and we have another question regarding how WinStar selects what projects to pursue when they're pitched. Um, if there's kind of a process that prioritizes the pitched projects based on urgency or um, any necessity in maybe the industry members requests so, so go ahead patrick so the the center uh right now we are going through our our projects that will uh beginning begin in, in september um and the the process is about a, a three-month uh process for the members to to come to us with their their new priorities. Um, so sometimes it, it's it's building off of these these prior projects, uh, and and they want to see uh, the work continue and to to expand to to new materials, uh, further investigations, uh, looking in, inspecting different wind farms and and different conditions uh, within within those uh, those projects. Uh, or their priorities have changed and, and they say, you know, now we're really interested in, in solving X problem. Um, and we, we solicit those topics and, and those, uh, and those uh, pain points uh, for our different members uh, right around uh, this time of the year. Um, and then, uh, and then we, we go through uh, the, Proposals be being created um, by the faculty, uh, and then those uh, get down selected uh, through a, a a couple different processes, but ultimately through voting of the uh, industrial advisory board, which includes uh, votes from from each of the uh, each of the uh, uh, members, um, and that's ultimately how the the projects get selected. So. They get selected by the members based on their priorities uh, at the at the June meeting. So let me just add the, the the faculty don't choose the projects; it's the companies that that vote on the projects and they select them. Uh, and the faculty actually are uh, 
removed or evicted from the room when the companies discuss which projects they want to fund. Okay, great, thank you. Um, I'll give another couple moments for anyone in the audience to ask any remaining questions. Um, but I think that might be it for today. Um, yeah, I think that is it. Thank you again. Um, to reiterate what Leslie said, we're really excited to have been able to um, participate in WinStar and um, contribute to this project. And it's really great to see the progress that the individual projects and the center as a whole has made over the past couple of years. Um, and again, thank you so much for presenting today virtually. Well, thank you very much, and, and thank you for the support over the pre over past years. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you all. And as a last logistical note, we can distribute the slides upon request. So thank you all for attending. Have a great day.